This is unit 12 of 14, and we're talking about moments. So a moment, also called torque, is a turning force. So who's heard of the word torque before? Maybe with like automotive or with other applications. Who's heard of the word torque before? So when you think of torque, when I think of torque, I think of something turning and how easily you are able to turn something. So the easiest thing to discuss that's in everyday life is a door. I'm going to draw a door here. It's going to be the most pathetic door ever. So here's a wall. And there's the doorway. And there's the door opening. Can you imagine the door opening there? You see how the door is opening like that? It's not an IQ test. I'm not trying to confuse anybody. So you see how that door opens like that? Now, if you wanted to close the door, I'm going to put two points on the door. I'm going to put a point right here, and I'm going to put a point right here. I'm going to call this one A and this one B. Where would you want to push on the door to close it as easily and effortlessly as possible? Everybody's saying B. Can, that's very good. Now, why is, why is it B? Why is B the better choice? Leverage. Thank you, John. What do you mean by leverage? I like your answer. It's hard to, to, to quantify that. Well, the good news is, John, the, this formula here is going to help you describe what leverage is because it's related to torque or moment. Bigger arc. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, Sean, Sean's getting caught, you know, hot, cold. Sean, Sean's getting a bit hotter on the target there. The answer is because B is as far as possible. See, B is as far as possible from the uh, the center here. See, from that from the hinge. The further you weigh, the further you are away from the hinge, the more turning effect you impart for a given force. So that's the idea. And that's what this D stands for here. So moment or turning force depends on two things. It depends on how much force you can apply. And everybody's different. So some people are stronger than others in this, in this audience. You know, maybe someone here can bench 200 and someone else can bench 50 or whatever. The point is that there's a force that can be applied. And the, the further you are away from the center of rotation, the the uh, stronger, or sorry, the larger the moment you have. Notice that in this formula, there's no squares. See, it's like squares. There's no squares. This isn't cubed. They're both proportional. It's a joint proportionality. We talked about that in September. It's jointly proportional to the two of these and directly in that fact. Force times distance. I want to emphasize that it doesn't, force is not more important and distance or perpendicular distance is not more important. They're equally valuable. So what I want to do is take this formula for a little test drive on a couple of easy questions. So this booklet has about 30 examples. My goal is to do as many of these as possible. And the, the good news is, is that if I don't cover every question, there's lots of uh, these. There's also the recordings I have from last year, which you can fill in some of the gaps if you need to. So in this case, we have find the moment. Now remember, moment is torque. Same thing. What is the moment generated uh, by the force here? We have 20 pounds, and we have a perpendicular distance of 1.5 feet. So that moment is going to equal the force times the distance, perpendicular. I left the space here on purpose. The force is 20 pounds.
and the distance is one and a half feet. So what's 20 times 1.5? 1 Hopefully you got 30. And pay close attention to the units. The units are pound foot of torque. I know that if anybody here has read a car manual, like when they, if they've bought a car before or looked up information about sports cars or anything of that sort, they've heard of torque on a vehicle and you'll often read in the brochure um, so many pounds feet of torque so i mentioned here that it says include the direction in your answer so direction direction refers to in this case a rotational direction so which way is this wrench going to turn is it going to turn clockwise or counterclockwise so counterclockwise, thank you, Jai. So it's turning counterclockwise. Now, if it goes counterclockwise, so I'm gonna call that CC. Counterclockwise is a positive answer. And clockwise for C is a negative answer. So because it's counterclockwise, we put a plus sign here and we put it there and in the answer. Now, let's say that this is an evaluation or maybe something a bit more professional. If you don't put the plus sign, it's fine. But it's it's good practice to put a plus or a minus sign in front to, to really indicate the direction. You can also just put here CC for counterclockwise. So if you're asked to include a direction, explicitly do it. Don't I don't want you to just put this and say, oh, I was lucky that it's positive. I don't want lucky. I want you to be very, uh, strong in your conviction in terms of communicating that. So that's about it. That question is in the imperial system. So how about we do a question in the metric system? Are there any questions? Who, find, who found that calculation to be pretty easy? Who found that easy? Anybody? Okay. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't get too much harder than this in terms of the basics, but it's really important that you understand these basics. So that's why I'm going slow. In this case, we have uh, the moment and it's going to go counter. It's going to go clockwise. See that it's going clockwise. So what, what's the answer? Is it positive or negative? Will the answer be positive? Yeah, it's, wait, wait, it's clockwise, right? See how it's going to turn this way? See how it's turning that way? That's negative. So clockwise is negative. All good, Jai. So it's minus 50 Newtons. And if you multiply that out, if you multiply that out, you get 70 negative, negative 70 Newton meters. That's it. So I need to clarify a little bit further about what this uh, D perpendicular means. I want to discuss this a little bit further. So let's discuss that with the following diagram. So remember the formula is M equals plus or minus D perpendicular. Uh, nothing too, too intense, Anthony. If a question's in the metric system, it will stay in the metric system. If the question's in the imperial system, it'll stay in the imperial system. I'm not gonna play those games. All right, so we're gonna talk about D perpendicular. D perpendicular is called the moment arm. In this case, um, there's no structure here, there's no wrenches, but I want you to understand what the line of action is. 
This helps you do questions that are more complicated. So I want you to imagine this force here. We well, don't have to imagine it, but if you draw a straight line that runs in the direction of the force, so you gotta imagine that line like that, that's called the line of action. So let's highlight that. The line of action is this thing. That's the line of action. Now, that line of action has a shortest distance to the point of rotation. So if you look here somewhere, somewhere here, would you, I think it's fair enough to say that it's right about here somewhere. So that is the shortest distance to the point of rotation. That's the moment arm. That is the moment arm. So there's no calculation involved here, but that's basically what I'm trying to get at in that question. So these next questions are gonna use this behavior. So let's see if we can do some calculations involving moments. I'll shift to my keyboard now because they're a little bit annoying to write by hand. As you saw, the stylus takes forever. So we're asked to find the moment. Now you can find the moment or torque around any point in the space. In this case, it's the point P. So the next wave of examples are really the most key to getting the basics right. So the moment about P. Well, if we take a look here, it's going to be plus or minus the force times the distance perpendicular. In this case, the force is 24 newtons. And the distance is 25 centimeters. There's a couple of things that we need to uh, remedy here. One thing is, do we put a plus or a minus sign? What do you think, people? Do you think that this force is going to go clockwise or counterclockwise? Yeah, it's a minus sign. Thank you, Gianluca. It's a minus sign because it's clockwise. There's no structure here. This dotted line here, you can think of it as being like a crowbar or, or a wrench if you want. You can pretend that dotted line there is a wrench if you like, but there doesn't have to be a physical object there. We're just talking about the behavior of a force relative to a point of rotation. In this case, although if you did want rotation, there'd have to be a physical object through which the force acts. In this case, uh, we need to convert the centimeters into meters. I mean, if you don't do that, it's, it's not wrong. But you want to stick to the most orthodox of units, which are, in my opinion, Newton meters. These are the base units of the metric system. I don't want to see Newton centimeters in your answer. And, it, and the question says you express your answer in Newton meters. And don't worry, because I won't ask you to express your answer in some absurd units that are not use, useful to real life. Anyway, if you multiply those out, you get six. So that's minus six Newton meters. You can put NM there. Some people like to put a dot. If you don't put the dot there, I'm not gonna get too upset. I'll just leave it like that. Although it does, honestly, it does bug me a little bit. Not gonna lie. So I like to put the dot there. It's just, it's a visual thing. It's just, it's a good feeling to have it there anyway. You can also write the answer as uh, six Newton meters, and then you can put your clockwise. I'm just trying to get it in one line of writing because it looks cool. So what's the answer to this question? Well, those last two statements that I wrote are both correct. These two statements here in red are correct. I don't care which one you write. 
But if you're going to do the one that doesn't say clockwise, make sure you put a sign in front to tell me that you knew it was positive or negative. I don't want it to be a coin flip that you got lucky. So you can try the next question. So what would be the next question here? Let's, let's try this one together. Anybody, uh, anybody got a, got some information on this one here? Is it clockwise? Is it counterclockwise? So is it a plus or a minus sign? What do you think? Plus sign or minus sign? Yeah, it's a plus sign because it's counterclockwise. The force is uh, 38 pounds and the distance is 16 inches. So this is straight up just multiply. So it's positive and 38 times 16. Ooh, but we don't want inches. We want pounds feet. That's right. So sucks to be you, eh? This early in the morning. I meant me as well. <laughs> you got to convert that into feet. At least we got some enthusiasm. Okay, so if you clean all that up, you're going to get 50.7 pounds feet of torque. And that's all it is. If you understand this basic idea, it really does carry over to all the questions. It's just a matter of you being, being able to identify the moment arm or the perpendicular distance, I mean, and what are the forces? And of course, make sure the unit's all correct. Now, there's a lot of questions in this booklet, so we're gonna really pace ourselves today, but we don't have to do every single one. And I'll, and I'll give you a warning about like which ones are important for the future and which ones are just like tougher questions to make you think and, uh, and to challenge you a bit. So these questions are definitely foundation questions and really important for your future understanding. But as we get to the ones that are weird, I might skip a question here or there and just say, look, those are just more like challenge questions for you to try. And your assignments at the end of the semester in the last two weeks will be a combination of easy questions and challenge questions. Because it is a take-home assignment, or a, a, it's going to be under a short timeline, though. You'll only have a couple days to write it. But it's going to be uh, anyway. We'll, we'll, we haven't we haven't set that up yet. But when we set it up, I'll discuss it better. Okay. So what's going on in this one? What's the? Uh, well, wait a second. What's going on here? Something screwed up here. Yeah, so Jai's saying there are no direction. So what do you think the answer is to this question? What numerical answer do we have here? Thank you, Ravi. It's, a, it's definitely zero because you have 210 newtons times zero. So it's zero. If you want to think about it, how it compares to everyday life, in this case, you are pushing on a hinge. You see that? You're pushing on a hinge. So if, you have, if you're near a door, if you're near a door, and it goes to our first example at the beginning, if you go and push on the hinge of the door, it's not going to rotate. Do you, do you understand that? That if you push on the hinge of a door, it will not rotate. Well, that's what you're doing here. You're pushing on a hinge. So how's it going to turn? So that's what the answer there is. If you're wondering if someone, if anybody in the audience here is like, where the heck is the door? Here's the door. There's the door. See the door? Here's the door handle, right? That's where you normally push on it. Well, you're not pushing on the door. You're pushing on the hinge of the door. If you push here, yeah, the door is going to swing this way. But there's no swinging here because the hinge is right here. So you're basically doing nothing. It's useless. I'll leave the door here. Maybe I'll just put the uh, handle here. Ah, whatever, who cares? Let's get rid of the door. The door does not exist. It's like those limits we used to do. The limit does not exist. Okay. How's everybody doing so far? Everybody okay? 
You guys doing all right? So quiet. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Sean. So uh, let's keep on going here, and we're gonna we're gonna keep on doing these calculations, and hopefully with practice you'll become more confident and more proficient at the um, material. I really believe that you're not gonna have too much stress doing these questions. It's just uh, it's just a lot more. It, it looks like a lot more than it really is. So let's take a look here. So we want to find the moment of this force at that about that point. So remember, there's a line of action here. See, remember that line of action I always ask you to draw? And this is D perpendicular right here, which conveniently is 150 uh, centimeters. Is this force going to turn clockwise or counterclockwise? Yeah, that's counterclockwise. So we can put together the answer now. If you don't mind everybody, I'm just doing the conversion right away. So things like meters, centimeters, I'm not going to even waste time like talking about how to convert. So that's 67.5 Newton meters. And I'll put the plus sign there. That's it. Question eight. Question eight looks uh, particularly scary to people because there's a triangle involved and there's all a bunch of like stuff here that maybe intimidates you. But when you talk about a line of action, it really doesn't matter. You just use that line of action. Here's the line of action here. And that is the perpendicular distance. Do you see that? So what number on this diagram, which number on this diagram is useless? The five. Sorry, five is useful, two is useless, yeah. So we don't care about this number here. We do not care about that number. So we have here, oh, it's clockwise, counterclockwise, so it's positive, 75 pounds at 5 feet, 75 times 5 is 375. Any questions? Is there an alternative to solving this question? There are many alternatives to solving this question. In fact, uh, we're going to get a little bit creative now. I'm going to send you back in time to the beginning of the booklet. For those that have studied calculus and vectors, this is the alternative equation. This equation here, I'll just type it here. If you don't want to use a moment arm, if you don't want to use a moment arm and line of action, you can still get the answer, but you're going to you're going to use a formula here that will introduce probably for some questions it's easier, for some questions it's annoying. For this question it would be annoying, but I'll show you how you would calculate it using that formula. So if you want to use the alternative formula, so I'm going to use an alternative formula here, and you're probably not going to like it. What you have is the following. This becomes D. 
this is F and there's an angle theta that you have to use so you use this angle theta you can actually it's actually to draw it correctly I let me do a better job of drawing it that's D it's a vector that goes away from the point of rotation that's F and then what you do is you draw the two vectors tail to tail like that this is the way you use the other formula, which I'm not gonna get into too many details with. I think it actually is just annoying. So I probably won't do this again today. That's theta. So you would have to calculate the angle theta, which as you can see is just brutal. Um, if you want insight on how to do that, if you do Sokotoa, this is 21.8 degrees. And then this angle here is 118 degrees, sorry, 111.8 degrees, 21 plus 90, that is. And already I'm getting a little bit irritated with my uh, stylus here. And then what you would do is you need to get D, don't forget you need D. So then D would equal uh, 5 plus 2 Pythagorean theorem stuff there. So that's uh, root, root 29, uh, which uh, five is 5.38. By the way, people, the stuff that I'm writing here in this, uh, in this color, I don't want you to do this, okay? Please do not do what I'm doing. I want you to do this, okay? This is, this is what you should be doing because it takes two seconds. The purple stuff is what you want. You don't want this like uh, pink stuff here. Now, if you were to continue on that, I'm going to just screenshot it from my answer key. Because on the answer key, I do it both ways, just to uh, show you that you could use that formula. But believe me, you do not want to do it this way. I'm just waiting for the screenshot to render. So here's how you would do it. And you can see here, you get the same answer. You see how I got the same answer there? See how the answer is 375? Look how much work it took. Look how much work it took that way. So this is this is not what you want to do. And if any anybody that teaches you moments or torques, uh, torques, sorry, in the future, like in terms of your future semesters, when they talk about it, they're gonna do it the way that I show you. I'm pretty sure because this is not fun to do. Let me put a big sad face here. Do not do it this way. Okay? Do not do it that way. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to put it out there so that you're familiar with that formula. For those that have taken calculus and vectors, they are familiar with this formula. I'm going to mention two words there. Cross product. So if you've taken calculus and vectors, you're familiar with cross product but I'm not using cross product here because uh, we we didn't do that in our vectors material we stuck to uh, we didn't do um, coordinate notation for vectors anyway component notation is, is, is what I meant to say there so we're gonna do question number nine here let's just keep on rolling and if you compare the two questions take a look at question eight can someone tell me it's the same diagram almost. You see how it's almost the same picture? Do you see how it's almost the same picture? What's different? What, what did I change in question nine? What's different about question nine? Yeah, the line of action and now the two matters. Yeah, exactly. So we don't care about the five. Here we didn't care about the two because the line of action is this way. There's my line of action. So that's D perpendicular, and that's your force. It's still going to go counterclockwise, so it's still positive. So we still have the same game that we're playing. In fact, I'm just going to I'm going to do a little bit of borrowing here. And we'll have here 2, 75 by 2. So that's 150. So hopefully that wasn't too intimidating because uh, it really is a lot of the same. I'm just looking ahead. 
and I want to make sure that I get you into a good place before we take a break soon. Okay. So we'll just keep on rolling here. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. So let's just keep on rolling here. I'm sure we can hammer out like another two or three or four or five of these. They're short questions anyway. So here's the force. I should zoom in. Maybe someone's watching this video later and they're like, I cannot read that. Okay. Here's the force. Here's the line of action. See the line of action? Oops. So this is the perpendicular distance. So is this clockwise or counterclockwise? What do you think? Yeah, it's plus, it's minus, it's clockwise. It's clockwise. If you take a look at the rotation, if you take a look at the rotation, it's this way. It's going to turn that way. And that way is negative. Clockwise is negative. So that's negative 700 newtons, 1.8 meters. So I did that earlier. And uh, sorry, 2.50 meters, my apologies. Sorry. The next question is the same diagram. I'm reading the same question. So anyway, that's negative um, 1750, I think. I'm trying to do this in my head. That's right. Okay. So that's the moment about A. Notice I put a subscript here, MA. So it's the moment about the point A. So there could be different points on the diagram that you're interested in finding moments for. But in this case, we want the moment about A. So it's pretty clear where to draw the line of action. The line of action is key for doing these questions. In the question 11, it's the same force. It's just oriented differently. It's over here now. So the line of action is this way, which makes this the perpendicular distance. See, that's right there. That's D perpendicular, which is 1.80. D perpendicular was over here for this question. I just didn't draw it like directly on the diagram. Maybe I should just draw it there. In this case, the force is going to go this way. So that's positive. It's going to turn it counterclockwise. Let's see if I can copy and paste correctly this time. That's going to be positive. And the distance is 1.80 meters. So I got 1260 there. How's everybody doing? How are you guys doing? Do you feel like you're learning how to multiply? Have I multiplied well with you today? Awesome. Thanks, guys. I'm glad to see other people popping in on the conversation today. All right. How about this one? How about 12? What's the moment here for 12? What do you think the answer is for this one? Thank you, Sean.
It's zero. The answer is zero because the line of action is passing through the point of rotation. Whenever a line of action passes through the point of rotation, it will, it will generate no turning effect. There is zero turning effect. So there you go. All right, and uh, nobody's chasing us here. So I think it's a good opportunity to uh, take a break soon. I'm going to uh I'm going to do question 13 right now and maybe 14. And then I think we'll take a break at that point. There are certainly key questions that I'd like to cover with you, but there's not many key questions in this chapter. So that like we've already covered kind of the ABCs, and I think that we're going to be in a good spot when we take a break. So just take a moment and read question 13. So we mentioned in the previous booklet, uh, in the previous unit, that the force of gravity or weight of an object is W equals mg, where g is 9.81. So that's what I've done here. That's the force. The force is 10 times 9.81. And the uh, moment arm, which is, the, in this case, the length of someone's arm, is 0.75 meters. Now, some of you are probably like, OK, I, I get numbers. I, get what you're, I, I understand the numbers, but can I see a picture? So I'm going to draw the worst diagram of all time. And if you laugh at me, you get a prize. So here I am. Here's my one arm, and here's my other arm. Look at that. Honestly, look at those skills. Look at those drawing skills. Who likes my drawing? Nobody likes my drawings. OK, fine. Anyway, there is the object. God bless you, Sean. Thank you, Joshua. See that? OK. So anyway, this here is the moment arm. I'll draw it in, in uh, blue. This is the moment arm. So that's you holding, or me holding, or whoever it is, holding uh, an object that generates a force uh, due to gravity, generates a force downward here on my hand. And if you do the calculation there, perhaps someone can enlighten the class what the answer is. What's the magnitude of this torque? Well, I did it earlier, and I got 73.6 Newton meters. OK. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you something to entertain the idea of what, like, what does 73.6 Newton meters mean? So can someone pick a car? What's their favorite sports car? Anybody have a favorite sports car? What's your favorite sports car? Or maybe you want to like F1 or something. Anybody, anybody pick, someone pick a car because uh, I don't want to write down cars here that nobody cares about. An F1 car. I'll do an F1 car. Sounds good. OK. So I Googled it, OK? And here it is, F1 engine torque. See that? 260 pounds foot. So I'm not going to do unit conversions right now off the top of my head. But I'll do it like that, maybe. It was 260, uh, oh, there you go. See that? What does it say there? 7,120. 7, you see that? Okay. 7,120. What do we have? 
70. So that's a factor of 100. That's a factor of 100. You got that? So, and this is like not even, this might be like really strenuous for someone to do for a long period of time. A, a, an F1 car can sustain at each axle 100 times what I can do with just my, my arm. So imagine 100 people trying to turn a wheel at the same time. Imagine how much turning force that is. Remember, 100 people. Do you, can, you, can you imagine the, how, how strong that is? What, what, how intense that would be? That, that's, uh, that gives you an understanding now, hopefully, of what 73 Newton meters of torque means. Because you can definitely appreciate what, uh, what it would be or how incredibly fast and how incredible amount of turning force is, is, uh, is exhibited in, in a motor vehicle like an F1 car. So as a comparison here, I've actually just done an example of a braking force uh, for a car. Like So for example here, let's say that there's 100 pounds of friction acting from the, from the road surface through a car wheel and the and the question here is what is the the braking torque that is required in this situation so magnitude only as well so that's why i don't put the uh don't put the actual um what do you call it direction so in this case we'll have 100 pounds and 20 inches but we want pounds feet because we've learned that pounds feet is the more uh, typical unit that you would see, especially if you're talking about like practical applications. So that's why we're dividing by 12 there. And that's approximately, um, let me see here. I cheated, I'll cheat here. I'm gonna look at my answer key for this one. 83.3 pounds feet. So, we're gonna take a break in about one minute. I do wanna mention something briefly before we take the break. If you go back to this example, remember this one here, this disaster? The reason this question was not, this purple stuff here, sorry, the, the, the pink stuff here on the right was not the most uh, optimal way to solve the question was because we were given the distances horizontally and vertically. So this formula here that we have on the first page the one that I've been using mostly is this, but this one here is not garbage. There are, there are occasions where this formula, you're better off using it. So in questions 15, 16, and 17, so take a look at question 15 coming up here. You see how this time we were given the angle? This is an example of where that formula is more efficient to use than the ones I've been using before with the moment arm. So in this case, we can calculate the moment arm or we can just use that formula directly. So I'm gonna ask you uh, during the break to just try question 15 and see if you can do the calculation uh, both ways. And, I'll, and when we get back from the break, I'll show you the answer. Uh, I'll show you the answer using the, the, uh, the formula involving sine but you'll see that it's the same formula as the moment arm one. They actually end up being the same thing, really. So let's pause the video. So we left off here at example uh, 15. Just uh, before we took the break, I made a small correction here. Thank you, Ravi, for pointing that out. I copied down to 20, which was the diameter, when it should have been the radius of 10. Anyway, we're going to explore now the... Uh, the use of the alternate formula where you don't describe the moment arm and you just use the uh, F times D times sine theta formula as indicated on the beginning uh, page of the booklet. So if you want to use this formula directly in this question, you can be just as fine with that. So let me just copy that in here. So if you just wanted to go with this formula, I've done the calculation already, and hopefully you tried it during the break. So the angle between the uh, torque vector, sorry, the vector 
and the moment in the uh, distance from the vector to P and the angle of 30 degrees there. So if you put that all together, you're going to get an answer of 250 pounds feet of torque. And I wrote down here clockwise. You can also have the negative sign if you prefer. Um, in the answer key, you'll see me write most answers both ways. I've been fairly diligent at doing that. So what about using the other formula? What if you want to use this one here? F equal, uh, sorry, moment equals F D perpendicular. So if you want to use that formula, how would it apply to this question? Well, here's the line of action and here is D perpendicular. What you can see is that there's a right angle triangle. So D perpendicular using the uh, SOKOTOA, just the stuff that you know from a long time ago, that's 2.5 sine 30. 2.5 sine 30, okay? So if you were to use the moment arm calculation, then this piece here, D sine theta, is really what the moment arm uh, is given by. So I just wanted to put that out there so you understand that both formulas are really describing the same calculation, just in a, in a different breakdown, but it comes out to being the same thing. So I just wanted to just mention that briefly as we proceed into a couple of more of these types of questions. My preference is going to be to use the formula here in purple. So this formula here, I'm going to use it one more time. And then after that, I'm going to stick to just the purple version, the one I've been using for the most part today. So question 16, we can perform the same calculation. So let's use the formula involving sine. So if we do that here, we have the following uh, calculation for the moment. In this case, the moment is counterclockwise. This force is generating a turning effect this way. And we say this way is positive, which is counterclockwise. So we have the force, the arm, which in this case, this is the arm right here. But anyway, if you've taken calculus and seen cross product before, this is the way that you would have done it. So that's the way, that's the reason I'm presenting a few examples in this format, because some students who have taken courses prior in physics or calculus and vectors, um, I want to reconcile, help them reconcile what I'm showing you here and what you've done in the past. And for the people that have never seen it before, they can see the two possibilities at least two possibilities of how to solve questions and decide which they prefer. So that's enough of, uh, of those two isolated situations. Question 17 represents our first example where you're asked to do a combo. That is, you're asked to find the moment about two different points. So this is more in line with what you're going to see when we do application questions moving forward into the last two chapters. So when we start talking about the final unit here, which is unit 13, not for another two weeks, you're going to be, you need to be very literate when it comes to how to do these types of questions. Multitasking, if you prefer, or co I call them combinations. Here you're asked to find the moments about A and B. So those are two separate questions. So let's take a look at the moments about each of those independently. Now, the moment about A, what do you think the answer is for the moment about A? Any takers on that? Anybody want to suggest what the moment is about A? Thank you, Sean. The answer is indeed zero. And the reason it's zero is because the line of action, look at that line of action, see it? It's going right through A. That line of action goes right through A. It's like you're pushing on a hinge or pulling on a hinge. In, the, in contrast, though, 
the moment about B is not going to be zero. It is going to, for B, it's going to go clockwise. So that's negative. And the force is 120 newtons. The distance is uh, 2.3 meters. I'm converting it right away to the most uh, base units in the metric system. And the angle is 40 degrees between the two quantities. So if you go through all of that, you're going to get negative 177 Newton meters. So that represents your first real question involving uh, multiple moment calculations for one figure. This is what you're going to have to get used to that you're going to be given a diagram involving in this case it's a very primitive structure but maybe something more complicated later and you're going to have to be on your toes a little bit for calculating moments so what do you do when the geometry gets more intense this is the point in time where as a uh, student you need to decide whether you like the first formula or the second formula. I think that most of you will probably gravitate towards the first formula, which is basically drawing lines of action and measuring those distances, the moment arms. The next question is an example where things could get really hairy if you don't know which way to go. So if you go with the uh, formula involving sine, I do think that it is a more complicated approach. And the reason is because you're asked to find multiple moment calculations. So I'll just mention it here in the document, but I won't do it in the document. Like I won't do the actual, I won't, I'm not going to solve it both ways, okay? So I solve this question. I just want to get that off my chest there, okay? You, I can solve this question both ways, but I'm, I chose to use the uh, former, which is the plus or minus F times the moment arm formula. And you'll find that this formula here is the uh, probably the more efficient answer. But let's take a look at what's going on here, because this question is a little bit different. Because this force here, I mean, I think most of you would agree that if let me, I can just draw this thing here. Most of you would agree that if the force went just this way, would that be an easier question? Who thinks that's an easier question? Do you see how that's an easier question? Or what if it was this way? Well, that's also an easier question, but that's exactly how we're gonna approach this question, people. Instead of dealing with one force vector, Yes. Instead of dealing with, as you know with forces, a force is equivalent to its components. So instead of dealing with the force vector, we can deal with its components and still achieve the same result. So those two components, I'm going to very eloquently call them Fx and Fy. And you absolutely, as a group, were really good at doing components in this course. So I'm just going to cheat from my solution manual and get those components right away. This step here is super easy. I don't expect anybody to have a headache with that. You should know Sokotoa decently, and you've demonstrated your ability to do that calculation uh, for components. So I'm just going to state it on the screen here and say, you know how to do this. It's not like I'm writing E equals MC squared and saying it's obvious. I'm just putting the two obvious formulas, which you know from past experience. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find the moments about A, B, and C using both of these vectors separately. So here's Fx. Fx is going to be uh, 37.6. Uh, 
I don't need to underline these too much, but I need to refer to these numbers myself. So I just want to have them visually close to me. So let's find the moment about A. So the moment about A is the summation or the sum, if you just want to say it simpler, it's the sum of the moments due to X and Y. So if we take a look here, we have uh, FX. Here's FX. FX is going to generate about A. It's going to generate a positive moment because it's counterclockwise. And also, the FY is going to do the same. So in this case, FX is equal to 37.5877. Let's uh, clean this up a little bit here. And the distance... What, how far is FX's line of action from A? Let's draw the line of action for F of X, for FX. Here's the line of action for FX. What's that distance? 1.5. That's this number here. And then FY, let's write FY down. How far is FY? How far is FY's line of action from A? How far is F, uh, FY's line of action from A? 2.5 is correct. So there you have it, everybody. Just punch all that stuff on your calculator. And hopefully someone can report an answer to the class. Anybody have an answer for that? It's very quiet this morning. I got 90 something. Anybody else get 90 something? Yeah, so 90.6 pounds feet. How are you guys doing with this question? Let me know in the chat here. I'm only really talking to a couple people the past 10 minutes. How are you guys doing with this question? Thank you, Joshua and Gianluca. Right now, it looks like I'm really talking to five people mostly today. <laughs> Hopefully, I can hear some more people in this conversation. Thank you, Christopher. I really want to make sure that I don't lose you with this stuff. This is not, uh, this is not something to gloss over. So, for those that are kind of scratching their head a little bit, what I'm doing here, what I want you to do is, because this 40-pound force is at an angle of 20 degrees, I don't want you to use it because it's weird. Instead, what I'm saying is replace it with the two components, Fx and Fy, and then use those two forces in purple and just add up their effects. So if you had Fx, it's the first term. And then if you have Fy, it's the second term. So just think of it as breaking it into a, two smaller problems, which are easier to deal with. Let's find the moment about B now. So the moment about B is going to be uh, something similar. So if we take a look at B, FX, how far is FX from B? It's still the same. It's still 1.5. And it's also going to be positive because it's counterclockwise about B. The line of action is the force. The line of action is part of the force. The line of action is parallel to the force.
And if you look at Fy, Fy runs through B. Because Fy runs through B, it's zero. This is zero. So you got that? This term here is zero because Fy has no turning effect on B because the line of action of Fy goes right through B. Let me put that on the side here. It's a good comment to know. Fy has, generates no moment. So if we clean all that up, I did that earlier and I got 54.6 pound-feet and it's positive because it's counterclockwise. Well, my friends, you're probably out of gas at this point with this question, but I got good news for you because the answer to C is very easy. Can someone tell the class what the answer to C is? It is zero, yeah. And why is it zero? Why is it zero, Jai? Tell the class. Yeah, because both vectors pass through C. Let's give this a different color. Let's make it blue. So there you go. I'm not going to clarify here, like, uh, sorry, what do you call it? Qualify this as easy, medium, or hard. I'm just going to say that uh, you definitely want to take into consideration moments and components together, and then then you can really say that you've been uh, you've been doing good work with this stuff. So at this point, we're we're going to skip question 19, not because uh, I I don't want to show it to you or it's the hard question and I'm trying to skip it because I'm lazy. I need to show you other stuff which is more valuable in terms of uh, breadth. This is a more of a depth question and also a question that I would like you to try on your own anyway. So question 19, it's uh it's going to be this one here. And we have a regular hexagon with this 100 Newton force. And you're basically, not basically, you're asked to find the moments about A, B, C, D, E, F. So I'm going to leave this for you to try as an exercise for homework. If you're wondering uh, solution-wise, I will post the solutions to all of this booklet at the end of class. So any questions that I skip, it, I'm asking you to try them on your own. This question definitely would be on the uh, more difficult side if it was an assignment question or something of that sort. I haven't created your assignments yet, so don't ask me if it's on the assignment because I don't know if it's on the assignment as I haven't made it up yet. I'm going to spend the next couple of weeks designing those assignments, which are for the last two weeks of school. So uh, at this point, there's good news, my friends, because this is really uh, the next kind of questions you're going to find easy. I have a good feeling you're going to find these next questions easy. But we've gone through the most dangerous or murky part of the material. And now we're going to talk about beams. So what you're going to see with me, 25, 20, uh, we're going to do six questions involving beams. And then after that, we'll have some time left over and we can take a look at some a couple of tougher questions. As you know, this week and in future weeks, there is no more MyLab quizzes. Those quizzes are all done now for the year. So I have three hours of teaching with you. I'm not saying I'm going to go the distance each time. But for this class, I may go the distance with you um, because it is a chapter that uh, last year I covered in two lessons when we were going virtually with uh, the whole COVID thing. So, question 20, here we go. These questions, many of you are going to find easy. 
they're gonna they might be reminiscent of something you did in a, in a class maybe even in middle school there might be the occasion that someone solved this question in middle school who knows so what's this saying here well this is not an equilibrium question so perhaps this is not a moment uh, this is not a middle school question yet but the after we do questions 20 and 21 they will be very very easy to do with intuition so just read this question for a second, and then I'll, I'll answer it with you. Yeah, R Ravi, the, uh, the question that I'm skipping, yes, they are equilateral triangles, because uh, a regular hexagon is comprised of uh, six equilateral triangles. Yeah, they're all equilateral. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay, so this question here says find the net moment. So this question is the net moment. I want to really emphasize this because some people are thinking this is like this is not three kids on a teeter-totter. It could be. I'm just going to mention here, this is not equilibrium. So I'm not asking you about equilibrium and balancing and other things like that. I'm just discussing with you finding the net moment. So I really want to emphasize that because uh, I remember showing this to people online last year and they're like, oh, sir, it doesn't balance out. It's going to tip over. And my response to those students was, yeah, exactly. It will tip over. But I want you to tell me what is the moment that it tips over with. So anyway, in this case here, we want the net moment that these forces generate about the fulcrum. Now, if you don't know what a fulcrum is, that's the pivot point, so right over here, okay? So if you want, we're asking for the moment about this point O. So the most natural notation to use, in my opinion, is the moment about O. Mo, B, Mo. Anyway, what are we gonna do here? Well, there are three forces that are acting on this, on this uh, structure. There is the 200 Newton force. There is the 300 Newton force. And the 270 Newton force. And what you need to help me figure out is what is the direction of the moment for each of those? So is this plus or minus? That's what I'm asking. I'm going to throw in some spaces here, and we'll come back to these guys later. We'll just deal with those guys later. So here's the 200 Newton. Okay. So um, it's going to be plus, uh, Joseph. It's uh, See, this 200 Newton force, when you look at it, which way is it going to rotate? Is this 200 Newton going to make it rotate counterclockwise or clockwise? counterclockwise and we mentioned yeah and we mentioned that counterclockwise is positive so this guy over here is also on the left side uh, I can clarify why that's counterintuitive to you Sean in two seconds do you remember from mathematics from trigonometry when you do the cast rule who remembers the cast rule Yeah, so Kabir, you see that? Sean, does that help you understand why counterclockwise is positive? Okay, so I'm not saying it's because of the cast rule, but what I am gonna say, it's because we use a right-handed coordinate system. This is a right-handed convention, sign convention. So we have here, if we get back to business here, this 200 is positive, this 300 is negative, 
And that's a good comment there, Joseph. Yeah, definitely. It's going to go, it's going to be, uh, sorry, that's positive. And the 270 is negative. So it's not a matter of it going up or down. It's a matter of the rotation. So counterclockwise rotation is positive. Now, you guys tell me in the chat, how far is the line of action for the 200 force? How did you get that, Jai? That's good. How did you get that? Yeah, you just add them up. Thank you. So 5.4 meters. How far is the 300 Newton's line of action from the point of rotation? And how far is the 270? I think you get the point. Final answer. Anybody have an answer there? What's the, what's the numerical value here? Um, Sean, it's going to be, you remember the last one's negative. 630, thank you. This guy's negative, right? I got 630 as well. So there you go. There you go, my friends. Look at that. That's it. Question 21. See, question 21, it's the same thing, isn't it? But in this case, this vector is going up, and this one's going up. I changed the number here as well. I changed the numbers a little bit. So let's see if we can get down the moment equation for question 21. So the 250 is positive. And that's 6.4. How about the 300? Is the 300 going to be positive or negative? Yeah, negative, because it's clockwise. And the 250 here, is this 250 positive or negative? Positive is correct. So let's clarify here. This one's going to turn it uh, counterclockwise. This one's going to turn it clockwise. So that's a negative. And this one's going to be counterclockwise. So the reason this question should emphasize to you that it's not a matter of if it's up or down. And it's not a matter of what side of the beam it's on. You can definitely pattern something here or establish some type of a trend. But I don't want you to do trends. I just want you to look at the picture and visualize every time. I want you to treat, treat each experience fresh so that you don't memorize things because memorizing is not a good way to do things. I want you to visualize it and go through the logic. So if you punch all those on your calculator, you should get 1960 uh, positive. So it's, it's counterclockwise. And that's that. Sorry, my, uh, there we go. It wasn't loading the uh, option there for a second. Okay. Well, that's exciting. Okay, let's do a question that involves equilibrium because we, we definitely want to see equilibrium in this course. When we're talking about structures and analyzing structures and construction, we, want, we don't want things to uh, tip over. So if this was a material or a, or a component in a, in a larger structure, you would not want this thing to start rotating because then it would not be in equilibrium and it would not be stable. So take a look at question 22. And this is the question I'm telling people that they would have been able to do in middle school. 
This question here you could do in middle school. And some of you can do this in your head. Anybody know what the answer is? Just do it in your head maybe if you can. Who can do this answer in their head? Any takers? Uh, that's correct, Sean. Very good. It's exactly uh, two feet. So what Sean did here was, I'm assuming, Sean, you, you said 20 times 4 should be the same as 40 times x. So if, if anybody's logic, let me write on the page here. If anybody's logic was this, 20 times 4 equals 40 times x. That's an equal sign. And then said x equals 2 feet. Anybody say that? Who was thinking that? In the chat. Let me know in the chat. Who thought of it that way? Okay, good. Because that's the way that most people would have done it if they learned if they learned levers in middle school. So my nephew, who's uh, 13 years old, is doing levers, and he's in grade eight. And I'd probably I'd probably put money that he could answer this question based on on the the lesson that he had back then. I'm not saying that if you didn't know this, that you're not good at something. It's just you may not have seen it for 10 years or longer. So let me show you how you answer this question formally. Okay, let's do this question formally. So I'm going to take my answer from the solution key and just drop it in here. But I'll go slowly through it. So there's the formal answer. So the idea is that for equilibrium, we want the net moment to be zero. So let's say that again here. For equilibrium, we want this to be true. So when you look at the quantities here, well, where's the force? Well, this one's going down, and that one's going down. So we have a 20-pound force which is a positive moment. That's why there's a plus sign there. And we have a 40 pound force, which produces a negative moment. That's why there's a minus sign here. And then you just add them up and do algebra. If you're getting a little bit annoyed because of all the units here, I just decided to write all the units everywhere. But you could answer this question just as fine by not writing the units all over the place. So if I were to just write down the answer without the units, but knowing that the units are important, I'm just, as long as you're consistent, let's write it down without units. 20 times four minus 40 times X equals zero. And then you see it, it's right there, okay? 80 minus 40 X equals zero, X equals two feet. You see what I'm saying? You end up with this calculation on the side eventually. So I'll say it one more time. This question here, most of you, if you had seen it in the past, hopefully you didn't find it too challenging then and you don't find it too challenging now. Now, I said that I'd put money that my, my nephew would be able to do this question. I don't know if he'd be, he'd be able to do this question. So if you, you know what, he likes Pokemon cards. If you could do this question, I'd buy him a really expensive Pokemon card. I give him a, I get him a Charizard. It's funny because he actually watches some of these videos and he learns a few things about trigonometry. So uh, if he's here, if he watches this video later, he'll probably be like, I'm getting a Charizard if I can answer this question. Anyway. Let's see what happens here. Anybody want to guess what the answer is to this one? Has anybody tried it? Jai, you are correct, my friend. Good job. So I'm going to go through the process for this one. And, uh, and then we're just going to see how it goes. See how this goes. I hope, you, uh, I hope you're getting the experience in today's class that you go from there's easy stuff. And then I went a little bit difficult with you. And then back to some easy stuff. So you can see that there's a little bit of an ebb and a flow in the design of this class. I really, I really took uh, 
care and precaution when designing this booklet to make sure that I don't just start off easy and progressively get harder and just destroy people. Oops. So there's my setup. So I'm saying that for equilibrium, the moment is zero, the net or total moment is zero. And then over here, we can fill in the blanks. So there's two plus signs because these two masses here exert downward forces, which will in turn make this apparatus rotate counterclockwise. However, the 40 pound uh, force here will impart a downward uh, uh, to the right, which means a clockwise rotation or a negative moment. So this 40 pound force will counteract the moments that are generated by the 20 and 30 pound forces respectively. So let's put the forces here, 20, 30, 40. And please someone tell me the lengths in the chat. Tell me the three numbers that I put. What number goes here? What is the distance for the 20? Four, two, and how about this last one here? How far is the 40? Anybody? Other than Jai? <laughs> Thank you, Ravi. That's correct. 80 and 20 is 140 equals 40x. And Jai has already enlightened us with the answer there. So that's three and a half feet. So thank you, people. That was good work. Well, questions 24 and 25, you can try those on your own. These are easy, so just do them later, OK? Homework. Whoops. Sorry, I'm bouncing on the screens a little bit there. Okay, let me know in the chat. Can I move on to the next question? Can we move on to the next question, people? Okay. All right, so these last questions here, they start to get a little bit dangerous. So I'm gonna do questions number, let's take a look here. We're gonna do numbers 26 and 28 for sure, and maybe 29. So let's take a look at 26 here. This is not a hard question. It just looks hard. Okay, people? It's, it looks hard, but I promise you, we're going to go through it carefully. We're, we might go really slow on this one, so the break might not come for a few, uh, a few extra minutes than we normally do. But I want to finish this question before we move on, okay? So just read the question carefully. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to read the question. Let me paraphrase it by just modifying the diagram. The idea here is that you want to put a single force at a distance from A and that that single force will replace, replace the two forces. So we're trying to, instead of having these two forces here, we want to replace these two forces with one force. Maybe it's over here. Let's say it's over there. So you're trying to find F, and you're also trying to find X, which is how far away it is. And I'm 
okay, my stylus is misbehaving. There we go. So that's what the question is asking, is what is the distance and what is the force? Are there any questions about that? So let's talk about how we would do this question. So a couple of conceptual things here. This question is really a preview of what you're going to see in the last unit. So I'm just showing you, uh, I'm just showing you a little bit of a preview. And I promise you, when we start doing questions in unit 13, sorry, in unit, uh, in unit 14, I meant to say, we're going to see a lot of good stuff, and we'll see this over again. So let's take a look here. So that's the logic that I'm going to use in this question. It must generate the same moment, but it must also be equivalent to the two forces of 6.9 and 5.8 kilonewtons. Can someone tell me what they think F should be? What should F be? Any takers on that? What should F equal? The sum, yeah. That's exactly what it is. 6.9 kilonewtons down. So the answer is 12.7 kilonewtons down. That's not supposed to be like magical. It's supposed to be almost common sense. I hope that most of you found that to be common sense, honestly. That was not a trick question. I mean, if it's supposed to have the same effect on the beam, then it should have the same total force. Now, the moment part is not, I mean, it's not as bad as it looks, people. I don't want you to think that this is something like, that you, something dangerous that you don't understand. Can someone tell me what the moment is about A for the original two forces? So, the moment... what is that can someone how would you do that calculation what is the moment generated by a about a by the original two forces how would you do that well there's the two forces are 6.9 and 5.8 do these 6.9 and 5.8 forces uh, that's correct Ravindra yes I gotta catch up to you on that one Okay, so let's do that here, people. So we have the following. We have minus 6.9. I'll use units of kilonewtons as long as you're consistent. And then minus 5.8, oops, at a distance of 10 meters. And that is uh, minus 99.4 kilonewtons meters. 
Any questions about that? So what's the moment about A generated by the single force F? Well, that single force is F and its distance is X. However, in the first part of the question, we determined that F was equal to 12.7. That's equal to 12.7X. And the units, of course, are kilonewton meters, if you want to write the units down. I don't know why it's typing an equation there. Anybody have an answer to X? Three significant digits? Any have, anybody have an answer to X there? What's 99.4 divided by 12.7? Let me know in the chat. Can someone confirm? Thank you, Jai. After you do 27 on your own, we'll move on to question 28. And we're just looking at a couple of interesting cases here, which involve something called a UDL. So I'm just going to highlight that word or that uh, acronym there, UDL. Uniformly distributed load. So in this situation, Notice that it's not a point load. It's not a single force acting. It's, it's, a, it's a distribution of a, of a force that you would experience in practice. But this question is still the same kind of overall setup as question number 26. So it says here, what single force can replace the UDL and still generate the, uh, the same moment about A? And I should mention it has the same total uh, force as well. Are there any questions? Is anybody curious or not sure what this diagram means? Anybody curious about that diagram? That's a UDL there. You're going to be hearing UDL a lot in this program. Can, can someone give me a practical situation where you might see a diagram like this to model that situation? What would be a, pr a practical situation where you'd see a diagram like this with a uniformly distributed load? Any, any thoughts on that? That is an excellent example, Ravi. So Ravi's example is a snow load on a roof. That's excellent. If you have a beam, for example, the weight of the beam is not at a single point. It's, it's distributed. Or if you have anything that's spread out over the beam or any other material or structure, that's called a uniformly distributed load, provided that it's equally spread out. So we, uh, we need to replace, or in this question, our goal is to replace this distributed load with a single force here, I'll just draw it here. And we need to figure out the distance X as well. I think most people by symmetry will argue that it's three and a half. So this question is really short and sweet. Are there any comments about that? Any, any questions or concerns about my uh, argument for that? You feel good with that? Let me know in the chat. Does that make sense that you'd want to put the force halfway? 
You want to put that force halfway. It's a tough audience today. It's very quiet. Let me know if things are good there. Okay, I'm going to move on then to the magnitude of the force. So oh, the, the value for F is really easy here. It's a units question. You're going to do 200 newtons per meter. And you're going to multiply by 7 meters. So that's going to be uh, 1,400 newtons. Are there any questions about that? How do you feel about that answer? How do you feel about that answer? Let me know in the chat, people. I'm kind of working on here with, uh, with a bit of silence here. Thank you, Jai. Anybody else there? Let me know. Let me know what's going on. Thank you, Mateo. So I will mention here, though, that this argument is nice to use symmetry, but how would you argue it? How would you get the answer without knowing about the symmetry? And and uh, the the dangerous thing here is, it's a, it becomes a calculus question. I'll put a happy face there. So I'll mention I'll show you the answer here, but I don't want you to get like super super uh, scared. Because I wouldn't ask you to do this on an assignment. But if, for those that are curious, I'll present you the answer right now. And it will scare some people, I know that. But I'm not doing it for the point of intimidation. That's how you'd use calculus to do this question. You would say that the force of 1400 newtons at a distance of xA. So this is the moment of about A. For the single force. And this is the moment of about A. For the UDL. And because the UDL is a distributed quantity, we would have to add it up. And by add it up, I mean we would have to take an integral. We would evaluate an integral. So what I've done here, like don't worry about this. Okay, I'm going to say here, don't worry. Don't worry, my friends, okay? This won't be anything that you have to do in this course. Or for that matter, most likely in the program. You're, the only reason that I would do this setup here is for situations where you have a non-uniform distributed load. So what if this distributed load was not was not uniform? See how it's always the same across? What, for example, like what if it was a triangle? What if it was a triangular load like that? Like if it's that case, then you would want to use an integral to set up that answer. So all of this here is a don't worry, okay? Just going to keep on saying that. But the takeaway from this question is when you have a UDL, in general, when you have a UDL, 
you can very quickly replace it by a single force that acts halfway or in the midpoint, if you want, of where the UDL exists. So if, that, if you understood that argument, then that really makes the question uh, a lot more manageable. So that's question 28. We're going to do one more question today, which is 29. And it's a remix of the one we just did. And I think at that point, we'll stop today's class. So uh, this is a little bit different for people because there's no quiz anymore. There's no in-class assignments. Uh, so anyway, hopefully this question doesn't take us too long. I think that many of you will be able to answer this question in less than a couple of minutes. So let's see if we can do that together. Using symmetry. We're going to use symmetry. So we want a single force that will replace the UDL. So what, where would we put the force? Anybody want to suggest? Where should I put the force? Should I put it here? Where should I put it? Let me know in the chat. Where do you think we should put that force? That is correct, Jai. We want to put it right around here. Once my uh, auto auto saver uh, stops here. So we want to put it right around here in the middle. And that distance due to symmetry is this. That's nine. Why three plus two? No, no, it's seven plus two. Oh, shoot, you're right. That's not nine. That's dangerous. Okay. Any takers on that? What's the answer then? It's not nine. Yeah, it's five. That's right. I tricked myself by tricking you. No, no, I'm sorry. I went too quickly on that myself. See, this distance here is two. And this distance here is also 2. So we have 2, 2. And this is 4. Sorry, that's 3. My bad. That's 3. So the answer to this question is 5 because you use the 3 and the 2. Let me know in the chat, people. Did that make sense to you? Anybody else see that? Like, do they agree with this? Please let me know in the chat that you understand that it's a 5. Because that's, that's like the, that was annoying. I tricked myself there for a second. Perhaps uh, I require some more coffee this morning. So we can say that the distance should be 5 meters from A. Oops. There's that. That's the answer to the first part of the question. Sorry, the second part. What's the distance? Let's find the magnitude of the force. So the magnitude of the force is simply the UDL, which is 200 newtons per meter. Oops, 200 newtons per meter multiplied by a length of 4 meters. So that's 800 newtons. So the final answer to the question is going to be F is 800 newtons meters, 800 newtons down. And the distance, if you want, XA, let's call it XA, is equal to 5 meters. So that would be uh, a sufficient answer for this question. So definitely, I think uh, this, this this lesson today is probably the most aggressive of the lessons that I've had with you this semester. There was a lot of reinforcement in the past booklets, but now we're kind of doing a sampler of uh, some more advanced topics. So the questions that I've skipped, I've left you for homework. So there's a few of them here. Let's take a look. There's this uh, There's this hexagon question. 
And then there's a couple of questions involving equilibrium with the beam. Those should be quick. The hexagon is going to take you some time. This question here, which is just an extra vector going up, I will have these answers posted on Blackboard at the end of class, so don't worry about that. And I've left you a little bit of a dirty one here at the end, number 30, which will definitely uh, challenge a few people. My advice to you when you do this question is to consider the components of this force. So I'm going to write a hint here and then try this for homework and, and you can consult with my solutions here, okay? So my hint here is to take that vector and chop it up into components. So instead, of, so the vectors that I've colored, so the, the purple ones and the blue one. So don't use this vector. Use the purple ones instead of the 5.3. That's my advice to you. Okay, let me let me give you a better hint on this question because I do feel that a lot of people will be kind of shaken by this one. So the first step is this. Let me get rid of the purple stuff here. So the first thing you should do is find the vector sum. That's my that's my suggestion for the strategy. So what you're going to do is you're going to take these two vectors here and you're going to add them up and you're going to get a new vector. And that new vector, I'm going to just call it, I'm going to draw it like this. Maybe it looks something like this. I'm going to put it right here somewhere. So that's the new vector. And that new vector is going to be at a distance here from A, which is XA. So that's my hint to you. I'll just say here, this question, uh, if I didn't say it earlier, this question is definitely hard. It will really uh, give you some challenge, but the first part about adding the vectors together and finding the sum, you know how to do that because we've been playing with that skill for the past uh, month or so, including the break and the midterm, second midterm. Now the, uh, the, the second part, which is finding the actual, the finding the actual location, that's part, part two of the question. So if you want, when you look at the solution, that's part one, what I do. And then in the solution, that's part two. I will post the solution immediately after class, so you will be able to see the solution to investigate and make sense of it.